Benvenuti. We are here at the San Lorenzo Market, also called the Mercato Centrale of Florence. I am Delphine. And I am Michelle. The Market of San Lorenzo is one of the most important locations for the Florentine people. Here you can find all the fresh products you need to cook an authentic Italian meal. A key part to Italian cooking is the use of the aromatic and flavorful herbs that can be found in the market. I am sure you have noticed the presence of parsley and basil in almost every Italian dish. Why are they so important for Italians? Greeks and Romans already use herbs in their cooking and for their rites. Herbs are believed to have medicinal benefits, which is an added bonus to the delicious tastes they provide. Thyme can help bronchitis, rosemary improves cognitive performance, and clove is used for upset stomachs. These benefits can be purchased already packaged, but some of the best ways to add herbs to your everyday life come from the plants themselves. Many stands at the market have fresh herbs that are still on the stand. One can tell which they are because they are usually found bunched together as talks. Now that we know how to obtain different herbs, it is important to know how to use them, and who better to ask than an Italian chef? We are here with the Professor Marco Cinauti, the supervisor of the cooking department at Lorenzo de' Medici. Marco, how do you use herbs in your everyday cooking? All right, using herbs in a, a kind of a cooking, it's very, in a way, easy and difficult at the same time. We have to understand that all the chefs and the cooks, that is very different, chefs and cooks, chef is the one who just gives order to all the other staff of the kitchen, and the cook is the one, is the wheel. The engine goes because of the cooks. All of us, we use herbs and spices. It depends on our culture and identity of the cooking, you know, where we're from. In Italy, more or less, we use no more than 10 different kinds of herbs. The most important are sage, salvia, rosemary, rosmarino, parsley, and we have a quote that says parsley goes everywhere and everything is good with parsley, but it depends, you know. Sage, parsley, rosemary, then we have bay leaf, very important as well. We have uh, marjoram, a kind of an herb that is called nepitella, I don't know in English, but it's fantastic with mushrooms. Then we use other few other, there's chives, that is much more kind of Mediterranean identity. And then you have some spring onions, the blossoming of it, that can be considered a herb. And more or less, those are the ones, and basil, sorry, the king, it's basil that goes, in this case, to me, basil is much better than parsley in going everywhere because it's much more delicate. Now, any kind of these spices has its own identity as the chefs and we have to use it very in a very good way. For example, the more strong are the spices and the herbs, the more strong should be the dish you use. For example, if I would use, if I would make a kind of a pork loin roasted with, um, fresh herbs, I would use bay leaf and rosemary and sage because they are the strongest one and they can be cooked longer. The, it's a matter of respect. The more you get a kind of a weak herb in terms of, you know, the sensation that gives you and the aroma, the less you have to cook it. That's why, for example, basil is used to make pesto because pesto, it's a sauce. We call it a mother sauce together with bechamel sauce and tomato that has to be cooked very few seconds with the heating of the pasta. So pasta is never cooked into the burner, on the burners, because otherwise you ruin the taste of the basil because it's delicate. So the more you have a strong taste, the more you should just cook it longer for strong dishes, the less it's strong, the less you have to cook it or not cook it at all. The herbs gives the best once you're raw. Okay, that's a matter of our philosophy. To let you understand which herbs it's better and or best with which food, you have, we have to, in a way, draw in a kind of imaginary uh, Italian menu. I'm saying Italian menu because we, were, we are very different from any other country in the world in terms of quantities and qualities. Quantities because we should have in our menu at least five dishes, okay, if you want to follow the line of our menu. Quality because we have so um, fresh ingredients, because we, we grow our own ingredients, because why we grow our ingredients? Because we have a lot of water, now it's raining, but we, we have a lot of different seas. Around the sea, you have the breeze, you have the climate, and you have the water that just permits all the things to grow, the grass for the cattle and stuff like that. So we have a lot of different kind of ingredients. All of them are first quality. The best appetizer to me we can serve in an Italian menu, it's insalata caprese. So simple, but so difficult at the same time. 
You slice the buffalo mozzarella in this case, it's much better than the normal one. A little richer, but much better in terms of, you know, taste. Fresh tomatoes, you put the mozzarella, the tomatoes on top, salt, pepper, olive oil, and a nice leaf of basil, okay? And that's it. You serve it with a crusty bread made with rosemary in the dough. So you see, we have two herbs, but the bread is made with rosemary because you cook it. Okay, rosemary is much more stronger, so you bake it in the oven. There's no problem in terms of burning it because it's in the dough. You cook it, strong herbs, very delicate herbs as basil. You don't cook it, you put it on top of the mozzarella and basil for the color and for the aroma that erases from the essential acids oil that you have inside these herbs. The best thing to do when you use an herb is just to break it with your hands, never with a knife because otherwise it oxidates and the things that comes out in terms of smell and aroma, it's just those essential, essential oils you have inside, okay? We go on with the first course, risotto, one of the most important and very famous dishes. You cook your rice with a fantastic vegetable stock. In the stock you mean you put some sage and rosemary, even a bay leaf, let it cook. You know, any stock it has to be cooked at least one hour. With those herbs, it's okay. Then once the stock is done, start to cook your rice with onions. Then you put some saffron. Keep on going until the end, 20 minutes. And then at the end, you put a very thin chopped parsley. Parsley as well, most of the people think that it's a very strong herb. It's not, it's very delicate. So you should cook it a little, little less than two, three minutes. Even because parsley, the more you cook parsley, the more it just comes try to develop some substances that are not so nice once you're cooked. It's, it's much more stronger in terms of taste and the color, it's gonna be completely, you know, blackened in a way. So if you want to keep the color given by the chlorophyll in the sun, don't cook the herb. The herbs, they're delicate, not more than two, three minutes. And that's the first course. Second course, once again, pork loin, because I love it. In Tuscany, we have best pork loins. You stuff pork loins with prunes, dried prunes. Put some apples inside as well, stuffed in. With a kitchen string, you just tie it up, make this kind of, you know, loin, put it in the oven, let it cook, no fat at all, because the pork loin is already fat. Another mistake people make, put fat on fat, never do that. Cook it two hours, once you take it out, you rub the top with a little bit of butter. The butter should be completely mixed with few mixture of herbs. In this case, we can use marjoram, okay, and a little thyme. The fresh ones, because uh, if you dry out some herbs, they become so much more stronger. Why we dry out the herbs to keep it in our kind of cupboard more, longer, you know, that's the, the, the making of the dried stuff. And that's the second course. I would serve the second course with baked potatoes, baked potatoes with bay leaf inside and garlic in the oven. So you see how many herbs? It depends on the way you cook the herbs, okay? That justify in a way the use of it. We can finish with a chocolate tart, like we made today. You bake the chocolate together with milk and cream and eggs, make a mixture, put it in the oven. If you use the small ones, rame cans, much, much better. Take it out, you finish, you top them with fresh berries and a few mint leaves, because mint is much more delicate than any other herb that it should be never cooked, okay? Mint and chocolate together, it is fantastic, you know, kind of a wedding thing. And in this case, you understand that you can use herbs in Italian concept of cooking for everything you do, from the appetizer to the last sweet thing. We hope you enjoy your Italian herbs and cooking. Buon appetito! Buon appetito.